Welcome back to the Max Runout YouTube channel. My name is Paul, and uh, we got a new uh, video for you today. This one involves a problem uh, that we had with the um, uh, Bridgeport Vertical Mill. Uh, it uh, it has a, a two-speed uh, gearbox on it, uh, uh, and it shifts from uh, the normal uh, high-speed. Uh, operation to uh, what they call back gear which uh, 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 reduces the speed of the, the uh, spindle by a substantial amount and uh, it's useful for cutting large holes or uh, using uh, big tools. It, uh, uh, the, the gear shift lever for that uh, uh, jammed. I couldn't uh, switch from, it was in the high speed mode and I could not put it in the low speed mode. Didn't really know what was causing the problem but uh, we uh, decided to take it apart and uh, have a look. So uh, let's get started. This is <clears throat> this is my Bridgeport vertical mill, and uh, the uh, the problem uh, was the ability to shift uh, from uh, back gear into uh, normal, and uh, the lever that does that. <clears throat> is way up here on the top uh, and uh, this lever was stuck and I couldn't move it at all and uh, didn't know what the problem was but uh, I uh, had to take it apart and uh, have a look. I put it back together temporarily just to do one thing but uh, we'll get it apart again and I'll uh, show you what went wrong. Uh, this lever is attached to a block here that mounts to uh, a shaft here and that shaft, twisting that shaft is what uh, actually changes the, the gear ratio here. So we're going to take this out <coughs> to get the thing apart. Two uh, socket head cap screws here. <coughs> you get those loose, and that'll come right off. <coughs> and uh, we'll take you back to the bench here, and we'll be able to see how this goes together. Okay, so this is where the uh, shaft went that uh, that actually changes the gears in the machine. <coughs> And uh, this little box or whatever has a, a pin uh, in it, and uh, that pin has got a spring, and it's, well, can't see that really, can you? Uh, when you, well, let's see, when you push this down, the pin is drawn into the, let's see, now you can see it now, it's drawn into the, this uh, assembly and uh, this lever's got a little um, <clears throat> pin that serves as a hinge for it and if I push it up uh, you can see that the lever has a little small pin on the end of it and it sticks into a hole in this pin and then there's a spring on the bottom that uh, gives it uh, so gives it a retraction uh, effect, pulls the lever back. Uh, so uh, this pin was uh, apparently pressed into this, uh, which is a little square, uh, well maybe rectangular uh, piece of steel. Uh, and it's um, it's made of a, a very hard material and apparently brittle because uh, it cracked right in half and uh, the pin actually when I first took it apart the pin was still uh, uh, stuck into uh, <coughs> into this uh, this half of the of the uh, steel piece and so I tried to make a temporary repair by just leaving this piece out and just using the other one but of course that came apart pretty quickly so uh, what we need to do is make a new part here 
Uh, it's, uh, like I say, uh, I'll, I'll make some measurements on it, but it's pretty close to square. And uh, it's got a hole in the center, which has got to be sized right to, for this pin to press into it. And then it has two indentations on the end here, apparently made by like a milling cutter. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I'll have to measure the depth of that. This piece is about 3 16 thick. And I do have some uh, 3 16 steel, but it's regular hot rolled steel. It's not hard like this, but uh, with the amount that I use the mill, I don't know, I think that'll probably last okay. But uh, you can see where <clears throat> this part has got worn out by the end of the pin. Maybe the people who are operating it didn't press the lever in all the way and it, 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 uh, it wore this little spot out on the, uh, on the pin. But uh, that shouldn't be too hard to duplicate, although it'll be working with a pretty small piece of steel. So I guess that's the next step. We're going to try to make a new part and then press this pin into it and see if we can... Uh, this is kind of an unusual, actually, arrangement because uh, instead of having just a pin that drops in a hole in the machine, this whole piece of steel moves with the pin. And you can see uh, in, the, uh, <clears throat> in the machine where there, there's a, an opening for this piece of steel to fit in, and then as you move it around to the different positions, there's a, actually three positions. The, there's a, the low gear or back gear position, which is with the lever all the way back and the lever towards the front. It's the normal position, and uh, there's an, uh, a neutral position as well. So when I first took it apart, th this, is the, this is the broken piece I was telling you about. And when I first took it apart, this pin was was jammed solidly in one half of this broken piece. And from what I could see at that point, I assumed that it was pressed in there. So my first thought was that uh, all I had to do was make a new part like this and uh, press this pin out of there and press it into the new part, and I and I had the problem solved. And um, but then uh, I uh, subsequently I, I kind of put it back together temporarily because it was a project that I had to do with the mill. But when I took it apart the second time, this pin had come out of the part. And uh, but I still thought, you know, I had my original thought. I just had to make a new piece. But then uh, I realized this pin is tapered on the end. Um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but. It's tapered, which didn't make any sense to me at all, because if it's tapered, then you wouldn't be able to press it in there. It wouldn't stay. And finally, it occurred to me that, that you know, it was a little weird anyway, because if you move the lever, then it would move the pin, but it would move this whole assembly. And, and then when you, when you move the uh, thing back to its original position, this would have to fit in a little slot in the... Uh, in the side of the machine, and so uh, that didn't make sense. So uh, I then subsequently took off this part. This is the um, uh, this is the part that was mounted to the side of the machine. Let's see, it was in um, this orientation, and this thing was actually a little slider that fit in there. and would slide up and down on the, if I can get it in there right, there it is, it would slide up and down, I guess, to deal with, you know, mispositioning of the pin. So when the pin went into it, it could, it could slide up and down and compensate for any uh, uh, error in the position of the pin. But of course, you could also adjust that with these, uh, uh, by uh, loosening these two screws and moving it up and down. So uh, I don't know, but I uh, so when I then I subsequently went into uh, uh, the um, uh, well, I went on the uh, web and did a little research to uh, let's see I got this upside down, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I uh, did a little research and I uh, all the breakdown diagrams that I could find, the parts diagrams, none of them had this little slider in them. It was a solid piece uh, with this, this hole elongated just a little bit. 
but um, but no uh, little slider in there. So I don't know. Maybe this was only used for a short time, or maybe this was a replacement part. I don't really know. But um, uh, I I looked at it some more, and I decided that. Uh, the right thing to do here would be to get a new plate like this and I looked at uh, a couple of different suppliers had them in stock and uh, so I decided to uh, go ahead and order one of these and so that's what I did and uh, partly because this is so badly worn you can see uh, the, uh, the side here is just about uh, you know we're two-thirds of the way through it and uh, over here this location which is the one that would uh, you'd go into when you're in the back gear was also fairly badly worn. So I got one of these on the way, should be here uh, in a few days and uh, uh, once it's here we'll put that back on the machine and uh, we'll see if uh, see how it works with the uh, uh, with the existing pin and, uh, and lever. Okay, it's a few days later, <clears throat> and the new part is here. Um, I uh, uh, it um, there's a few differences that I noticed uh, right away. One of them is, of course, it doesn't have the little slider. I expected that, um, but the um, it, it what it has instead is a tapered hole, um, or slightly tapered hole to to fit this pin, and uh, that seems to work okay. Um, one other difference was uh, the holes um, in here were too small for a standard. Uh, the, the screw is a, a 1032, and these holes were too small for the uh, standard 1032. Well, I'm telling you a lie. They do fit. Anyway, these. Uh, <coughs> These holes here were quite a bit bigger uh, in the new part and uh, it was kind of sloppy so I wasn't sure that the shoulder was going to work right because the, the this is a this hole is uh, <coughs> got a shoulder in it and uh, I don't know if you can see that or not but the bottom part of the hole was bigger too when I was concerned that the uh, shoulder on this part wasn't going to be big enough. It fits snugly in the uh, in the old part, the screw does, but uh, not so snugly in the new part. There's a lot of, a lot of space around it. So we got uh, some new uh, 1024 uh, socket head cap screws, and they fit a little tighter in there. And I think they'll be a better fit. I did. I had some other ones that didn't seem to fit in here. So I don't know. I'm confused now. But uh, Anyway, though I just picked these up at the hardware store, and I think they'll do the job. Uh, so uh, let's get uh, started here and uh, uh, put this uh, back on the machine and see what happens. Okay, we're back at the machine, <coughs> getting ready to put the new plate on. That's nice. I actually thought about making this plate uh, myself, uh, but I realized that I had no way of knowing exactly where to place these holes. The one on this side was worn pretty bad, and the one on this side was on a slider, so uh, 
I couldn't be sure just exactly where it had to be, so I decided to just buy one. Okay, we got the uh, pin back in the, uh, the lever mechanism here, and uh, that's got to slip on here. And we got to push this against the spring and then tighten up these <coughs> clamps. Okay, it's working right now. <coughs> there's the neutral position, and there's the uh, back gear position. So, works in all three. Let me back you up a little bit. <clears throat> okay, now you can see the, the chuck. So, uh, we're in the high position now. And now we're going to, in the low position, and... Uh, yeah, or back gear position, and you can see that it turns backwards, which it's supposed to do. If I reverse it, now it'll be in the correct location. <coughs> back to high. <coughs> okay. I think it's fixed. <clears throat> so we found out that uh, my mill was uh, a little different than most of the ones that uh, I could find information on on the web. Uh, and it, um, uh, but uh, we were able to uh, replace the part. Uh, I originally I thought I might make the part, but we ended up uh, purchasing uh, uh, a replacement part for it, which was readily available. And. Uh, the, it all came out fine, so the thing, the mill's working again, and uh, we're happy that uh, uh, we got past that problem. So uh, with that, uh, we'll say goodbye and uh, hope to see you uh, soon in, uh, in the next video. Uh, thanks very much for watching.